Praise be Jesus and Mary. Today we celebrate this feast of the holy guardian angels and the entry in the Roman martyrology for today says, the memorial of the holy guardian angels who were first called to contemplate in splendor the face of God. They are also entrusted to mankind by the Lord so that with their invisible yet solicitous presence, they may be near us and advise us. So we see in this explanation of today's memorial or feast day, however it's being celebrated, that the angels were first made to contemplate the face of God, right? This is primarily okay, their first and foremost duty to contemplate the face of God in heaven. This is what our Lord affirms in today's gospel when he says, For I tell you that in heaven their angels always behold the face of my Father who is in heaven. So there in splendor they behold the face of God. But God in his goodness also entrusted these guardian angels to mankind so that with their invisible presence, right? Uh, we can't see the guardian angels, normally speaking. Uh, we profess their existence every single Sunday when we recite the creed and we profess God being the creator of all things visible <clears throat> and invisible. And what are we talking about when we're talking about the creation of the invisible things? We're talking about the angels, so we do profess that every Sunday. So their presence is invisible, cannot be seen, but sometimes it can be observed. I mean, I'll give you a good example. Yesterday, I was giving my homily at Sacred Heart Church over there in Taftville. And I set up my phone, just like I did this morning, to record the homily. Well, I didn't notice this, but as I was giving the homily, my phone was actually sliding down the pulpit, down the uh, ambo. And um, it happened to work out perfect because I didn't notice this either, but behind me was the crucifix, the main crucifix in the church. Slowly but surely, as my phone is sliding, the crucifix comes into scene over my shoulder. And I reach a point in the homily where I point to the crucifix. You know, to me, that's my guardian angel playing cameraman. You might say, oh, well, you know, that's coincidence, doesn't prove anything. And if you answer like that, I just say you lack piety, right? Where is your piety? The angels exist. They do these types of things for the honor and glory of God. So they can't be seen. They are invisible. But sometimes their effects can be observed. And I just give that as an example. They are near us. And they advise us. When does their presence begin? The Catechism in paragraph 336 says, From its beginning until death, human life is surrounded by their watchful care and intercession. So we're talking from the moment of conception until death. There is a guardian angel assigned to you who is always near you has watchful care over you. This is from Psalm 91. For he will give his angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways. So they guard us and they advise us and they intercede for us, they pray for us. So although they were made primarily to contemplate, behold the face of God, to honor and worship him, Nevertheless, there is a solicitous presence because they love us too, because we're made in the image and likeness of God. So they have a great love for each and every one of us, and they guard us. Now, you might be, there might happen something in your life, something might happen in which you get injured or you get in a car accident and you start to wonder, where is my guardian angel in that? The first thing I would say is 
do you ever invoke your guardian angel? Right? If it seems like your guardian angel is slacking on the job, I would say maybe you're slacking on the job. Right? How often do you invoke your guardian angel? Well, when should we invoke our guardian angel? I would suggest at the beginning of the day. In fact, the guardian angel prayer, we say, ever this day be at my side to lighten and guard. So it makes sense. We'll pray that at the beginning of the day. But I would also say, it's good to say that prayer before you go to sleep. Just change the word. Ever this night be at my side to lighten and guard, to rule and guide. So that the guardian angel can inspire with good and holy dreams and give you restful sleep. Right? So that evil spirits won't disturb you and bother you and you know, cause you uh, to have a bad night's sleep. So beginning of the day, end of the day, before you go to sleep. I would say also before travel, whether it be by car or by plane or uh, whatever. It could be by bicycle if you live in the city, these type of things. Pray to your guardian angel for safe travel. Before doing dangerous work, you know, if you have to uh, change the shingles on the roof, you know, pray to your guardian angel before climbing up there. And I would say also before intellectual work, you, know, you also pray to your guardian angel to enlighten you because he's a lot smarter than you are and he can help you. I think some of the saints, I think it was Padre Pio, his guardian angel would translate languages for him and things like that. So our angels, they will help us in all these ways if we invoke them if we thank them, and uh, if we honor them. So let's do all of these things because this is our faith and we want to live our faith. Holy guardian angels, protect us and guide us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.